We sail with valor in our souls and honor in our hearts. Our purpose? To establish dominance in the Indian Ocean. We are the Indian Navy. The last time India felt threatened, it wasn't by a communist country, but by a democratic nation that is often praised as a defender of democracy. Ironically, this threat was directed at India, the world's largest democracy. Remarkably, it was the Soviet Union, a communist country, that came to India's aid. In 1971, the US tilted towards the Islamic Republic of Pakistan against India. Additionally, US warships have been conducting operational assertion to express America's refusal to recognize certain maritime claims by India, at least since 1985, under a Freedom of Navigation program it launched in 1979. The US conducts Freedom of Navigation operations to challenge maritime claims it deems excessive. However, the US is not a signatory to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which provides the international legal framework for navigation rights. Despite this, the US operates freedom of navigation globally. The US says it does not recognize India's claims pertaining to both territorial sea jurisdiction and India's exclusive economic zone. And it conducted operational assertions in India's territorial sea, challenging India's claims for the first time in 1985 and continued through to 1989 and then from 1991 through 1994 and then in 1996, 1997, 1999, 2001, 2007 and 2011. According to the Maritime Claims Reference Manual issued by the Defense Department's representative for Ocean Policy Affairs. India doesn't have any other option but to keep building up its own navy. The Indian Navy operates significantly in the Persian Gulf region, the Horn of Africa, the Strait of Malacca, and conducts routine to two three-month-long deployments in the South and East China Seas as well as in the Western Mediterranean Sea simultaneously. For decades, India has focused its defense policy on its land borders with rivals Pakistan and China. We were once known as a landlocked country with seashores, but now we can be seen as an island country with land borders. Now, as its global ambitions expand, it is beginning to flex its naval power in international waters. A strong Indian Navy is the positive way to keep India safe from all external forces. India sent three guided missile destroyers and reconnaissance aircraft last year when Yemen-based Houthi rebels began targeting ships in solidarity with Hamas, causing disruptions in a key trading route that handles about 12% of global trade. The deployment highlights the country as a proactive contributor to international maritime stability, said Vice Admiral Anil Kumar Chavla, who retired in 2021 as head of India's Southern Naval Command. We are not doing it only out of altruism. Unless you are a maritime power you can never aspire to be a global power, Chavla said. India, already a regional power, is positioning itself as a global player today, an upcoming global power, he said. India is widely publicizing the deployments, signaling its desire to assume a wider responsibility in maritime security to the world and its growing maritime ambitions to regional rival China and anyone who dares to threaten India. The Indian Navy has helped at least four ships three of which were attacked by Houthi rebels and another that Washington blamed on Iran, a charge denied by Tehran. It has also conducted several anti-piracy missions. Maritime security has not been a strong pillar of India's foreign policy engagements in a way the world is beginning to see now. China has built up its presence over the years in the Indian Ocean, a key route for its energy supplies. 
It has the world's largest navy by number of ships, more than three times the size of the Indian Navy. China also operates a powerful fleet of large coast guard ships and what is referred to as its maritime militia consisting of fishing vessels that cooperate with the Coast Guard in asserting territorial claims in the South China Sea. It is a message to China that, look, we can deploy such a large force here. This is our backyard. Though we don't own it, but we are probably the most capable and responsible resident naval power, Chavla said. Beijing has deepened its engagement in the Indian Ocean mainly through infrastructure deals with India's neighbours, including Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and most recently the Maldives. The Chinese are looking for more and more naval bases in the extended Indian Ocean, said Lieutenant General D.S. Hudda, a former Indian military officer and now a strategic expert. Seeing that, India doesn't have any other option but to keep building up its own. The Maldives government gave clearance to a Chinese research ship to dock in its port. Similar Chinese ships have made port calls in Sri Lanka in 2022 and 2023 amid fears in India that they could be used to surveil the region. India's concerns led Sri Lanka earlier this year to declare a one-year moratorium on foreign research ships entering its waters. Experts say the growing competition with China is energizing India to acquire more advanced ships, submarines and aircraft, and invest more in technology and infrastructure. The Navy's share of India's burgeoning defense budget, which reached $72.6 billion last year, has increased to 19% from about 14%. The Indian Army has traditionally received the lion's share of the military budget. The Indian Navy has also built strategic partnerships through participation in joint exercises with other nations in the region and beyond. India, the US, Australia and Japan are members of the Indo-Pacific Strategic Alliance known as the Quad, which has repeatedly accused China of flexing its military muscles in the South China Sea and aggressively pushing its maritime territorial claims. The navies of the four countries regularly hold drills seen as part of an initiative to counter China's growing assertiveness in the Pacific. Beijing maintains that its military is purely defensive to protect what it says are its sovereign rights and calls the Quad an attempt to contain its economic growth and influence. For Indian naval planners, the South China Sea remains a top concern with about 60% of India's cargo passing through shipping lanes in the Beijing-dominated region. India doesn't have strength to project power into the South China Sea right now because of the vast Chinese maritime assets there. Frankly, if it comes to a shooting war, India does not really have the capability and Quad does not have the mandate. You know, it's not a NATO-like alliance yet. However, India is already spreading its wings on the Indian Ocean, 